You guys ready to worship this morning?
That is who you are. 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 Cause you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper.
trust in you alone and i will not be shaken and i will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation and i will put my trust that I need to share this with everybody. Uh, I want to paint a picture for you before I share it really quickly. So Paul is writing a letter to a, a group of people, uh, a church, and we're, we're specifically talking about the, it's, it's the book of 1 Thessalonians. So he's writing a, a, a letter to these people. He was with them for a season of time, preached the gospel, and in that gospel, uh, people were coming to the Lord. But it didn't come without persecution. It didn't come without hardship. So Paul had to leave the church there. And instead, he, he, got, he had to flee. But the people there stayed. They persevered. They were pressing on. And they were receiving persecution. And Paul is writing to them. And this is what he says. He says, we give thanks to God always for you. 
constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith in labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you because our gospel came to, uh, came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Paul is praying for and encouraging the saints for the persecution that they were facing, the hard times that they were facing. I don't know about you, I mean, 2020, I think you can just label the whole thing as a hard time for a lot of people. So as we pray this morning, would you receive the encouragement of the Holy Spirit? Would you receive the encouragement of Jesus? That we're going to put our trust, we're going to put our hope, we're going to build our life upon that foundation. Jesus, we worship you. We just love you so much. And we thank you that we can put our firm foundation on the hope that you have given us, the peace that you have given us. And, and Lord, as we take the words that were written by Paul thousands of years ago, we can directly apply them to our life today. We can take that encouragement to persevere and to have steadfastness in our everyday lives. Lord, your word doesn't say that just because we're Christians, everything's going to be awesome and that everything is going to be okay. But sometimes we do go through some things. And Lord, the, the best testimony that we can have is that even in the hard times, even in the, the times of doubt, we can put our trust on the firm foundation of Christ Jesus. And it's in that testimony, Lord, that uh, your light shines bright. It's because there's no other way that we can do this without your love, without your grace. So Lord, this morning, would you fill us to overflowing that we might live out, out of that overflow, no matter our circumstance, no matter the persecution, no matter the troubles that are going on in our lives or where we find ourselves this morning. We can have hope and trust in you. And in, gosh, there's no other, no other thing to say at this moment, but thank you and amen. Amen. Well, thank you guys. It's so good to see everyone this morning. I'm going to turn it over to Derek. Good morning, church. Hey, before you're seated, give somebody a, an air high five air hug, a thumbs up, and then you may be seated. All right, good morning, church. Got some announcements for you this morning. Um, my name is Derek. I'm the Heart and Soul Coordinator here at One Hope. Um, you know, I just want to, <laughs> I was just laughing back there. I, um, maybe it's just me, you know, I was singing with my mask on. Man, I look like I was singing in a car, <laughs> like no one's around, you know, um, that mask does that for me, I don't know about you, but you know, when it's off, I'm a quiet mouth sometimes, but but yeah, I love being here, um, it's good seeing all of y'all, um, so thank you, I just want to say quickly, thank you for joining us, and we'll dive into these announcements first, hey, if you're a first time guest, or you're joining us for the first time, or maybe you've been joining, but we haven't connected yet, the way we're going to ask you to connect with us is by texting us, if you can text hello, to 863-777-5639. That's a way for us to kind of start the conversation. We just uh, want to welcome you and thank you. Um, actually, all these announcements is going to be about a way we can connect here at One Hope Church. Um, but this is one way to do it. Um, like I said, if you've been joining us for a little while and haven't, we haven't had that chance yet, normally we'd ask you to drop something off the offering, the connection card, but we're doing a text in this season, so... Next, um, while we're at it, hey, let's keep our cell phones out. One thing we do here at One Hope Church is check in. Uh, we check in on Facebook. We check in every week because each month we partner uh, with some pretty incredible organizations. And this month, our partner is Haiti Partners for Empower Through Education. And every 10 check-ins is going to provide a day of school um, for a child in need in Haiti. 
you just you check in on Facebook. There's a little button to check in when you're posting a, a, a post. And you can use the hashtag school for kids. And 10 check-ins will help provide that day. I mean, if I could, if I could get 10 check-ins and get a day of college education, I would have been checking in all the time. Give me some free books. So uh, by checking in. So yeah, please do that while you're here or later. Hey, and one thing, another announcement is uh, we're gonna be registering for our seats. For those who are here, you probably did that on the way in, or if you didn't, you someone helped you on the way in, um, registering for your seats. So we're asking you to do that. For those who are watching online, maybe you're planning to come, one thing we're gonna ask is if you could reserve your seat by registering before you join us on Sunday. That's gonna help us out tremendously in a couple ways. Um, we're gonna be dropping the link on Line on Facebook and the web or the church's website at 6 p.m. tomorrow morning or tomorrow evening. Uh, that's uh, onehopechurch.org, and the, the link will go out at 6 p.m. But you're going to help us by one, we can stay physically distant while we're here, but also uh, to maximize our capacity. So if you're a family of three, try to get a section for three spots. If you're a family of six, there's seats even up to six. And even for those who are riding solo, there's uh, single seats out here too. So try your best to uh, navigate that. And if you have troubles, we'll see you on Sunday and help you when you get here. Next, um, hey, one thing we've been doing this season is uh, doing uh, Bible, Bible plans and devotions. Have you joined us for one of those devotions in this season. If you haven't, the link's online and the in the comments on Facebook, uh, our host is dropping the link for that. Uh, join us on the Version Bible app and we're gonna do the plan, the hope. And this is one way we've been strengthening our faith and sharing hope in this season. Um, it's pretty cool to be able to, to read the Bible together and then comment on there and just share our thoughts. It doesn't have to be, you know, earth shattering necessarily. Like, hey, yes, this spoke to me today. Comments like that is definitely just help, helpful and uplifting. So join us for that. Check out the links. Join us there. Um, last two announcements is Hope Groups is the next one. Any love for Hope Groups out there? <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes. Um, Man, Hope Groups are amazing. It's a, it's a way we do church outside of Sundays. Um, this whole season, we've been doing Zoom, Hope Groups online. Um, so we'll be announcing those soon. But I wanted to make an announcement today to say a couple of things that they are around the corner. So prepare yourself, get ready to get on Zoom. Um, but also I wanna extend, if you're interested in leading a group, connect with me. Let's see each other's talk. Um, we've had groups from talking music, clubs, parenting, uh, women's group, Bible studies. We've had all kinds of group done through Zoom. And what's really cool is some people even outside of this radius can join us. You know, people from out of state have joined us. So maybe you have an extended friend or family. It's one way to do church outside of Sundays through group uh, Zoom hope groups. So you'll see and hear more about that. If you're interested in leading, talk to me. And then lastly, we just want to thank you for your generosity in this season. And the church, very generous, um, just been incredible to, to be surrounded by uh, people of faith here. Um, there's four ways to give and um, worship through giving here at One Hope. And the first way is you can give online. You can download the One Hope app and give on there. You can text to give, which is just texting One Hope Church to 77977. Um, you can send a, uh, a check to the church's address. And lastly, you can, if you're here today, there's a, a bucket out by the back you can give on the way out. So I want to share that. Church, just thank you so much for being here. I'm excited for the message and what's happening here at One Hope. A lot of ways to connect in this season. So thank you. Let's have a great day. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, 
He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith more precious than gold, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Well, hey, good, good morning. Make sure I got myself turned the correct way. Yeah. Hope you're doing well today, and welcome to uh, One Hope Church, all you guys that are here live. Uh, wow, what an amazing thing to be together again, and uh, that's, that's pretty awesome. And hey, all of you that are watching online right now, Thank you for joining us today, and we have uh, uh, hosts that are there uh, ready to interact with you, so uh, make sure you give them a shout out, let them know where you're watching from, all those kinds of things. But hey, it's so good to be together. Uh, by the way, my name's David, I'm the pastor. If I haven't met you yet, uh, I'd love to say hello afterwards uh, to those that are here. And uh, for those that are watching online, you can shoot uh, the message, uh, text hello to 863-777-5639. I've memorized that number by now. And uh, we're glad that you're here today. Well, one of my mentors is uh, a pastor by the name of Tim Gilligan. He was uh, my youth pastor growing up. And he pastors in Ocala, Florida now. And he always says that church days affect the rest of your days. Anybody believe that? And I believe that with all of my heart. And uh, so I'm glad you're here in church, or I'm glad that you're at home watching church and interacting with church online today. Well, last week we began this series of messages that was called Anchored in Hope. And uh, we've been using this metaphor, this picture uh, found in Scripture of hope being the anchor for our souls. It holds us firm and it holds us steady through the storms and the calm of life because we need an anchor to hold us firm. And our key verse that we've been reading comes from Hebrews chapter 6. Uh, and verse 19, and just really the first part is where we read last week. It says, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. And what an anchor is for a ship, hope is for our soul. So whatever needs to be held steady, whatever needs to be held in place uh, in the storms of life or in the still of life, uh, it's done by this anchor called hope. Because even in the calm of life, uh, you know, if you're not anchored, you, you may drift a little bit. And uh, in the middle of the storm, when the wind is howling and the waves are beating against you, you know what? If you're anchored, you won't go under. And so we've all gone through challenges uh, in these last six months. I mean, come on, uh, uh, Jeff was just talking about it. Uh, this season has been a challenging time and a lot has been happening in our world. And for some of us uh, in our personal lives, we've been going through a lot of stuff as well. Uh, at times, maybe it seems like life is just kind of going out of control. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know about you, but I love classic TV. Uh, come on, somebody he, who, who likes some classic TV, all right? Uh, there are some great life lessons that have been taught through some classic television shows. And, you know, when it comes to this thought of life being out of control, 
I don't know any better illustration than the episode on I Love Lucy. They got the picture up for you. Uh, of It was called Job Switching. It was actually season two, episode one. It aired uh, 58 years ago. Come on, somebody. That's older than most of you guys sitting in this room. Uh, but in this episode, uh, the husbands, Desi and, and, and Fred, they, they get upset. Ricky, sorry. His real name is Desi. <laughs> Ricky Ricardo, right? Uh, Ricky and Fred get all upset because uh, Lucy and Ethel are spending all the money. And they're like, hey, we work hard for this money and y'all are spending it all. And so uh, they tell them that, hey, we need to switch. The guys will stay home. We'll take care of the house and all the chores. And y'all get a job and go and work and earn some money. And so uh, that's what the girls do. They go and they get their, themselves a job in a chocolate fa factory. And here's a couple of photos from this uh, famous scene where Lucy and Ethel, they're working the conveyor line. The belt is going and the chocolate is going. And they're told, hey, you've got to take each piece of chocolate, wrap it up in a paper, put it back on the conveyor. And if one gets by, you're fired. So it starts out kind of okay. They're like putting it in the paper, wrapping it up. They're like, oh, this is fun. They're talking to each other. Then all of a sudden, the conveyor starts coming a little faster. And they're like, oh, I don't know if I can get it. And so they like start pulling them off the conveyor, and they're laying it on the, on the counter there. And then all of a sudden, they realize it's going by so fast they can't keep up. And so they just they start putting them in their mouth. They like take their hat off. They're sticking them in the hat. They're shoving them down their shirt. They're doing whatever they can to try to get control of this out-of-control situation. And uh, what's fun on this television show is that they make this out of control situation funny but how many of you know when real life gets out of control uh, in our lives it's rarely a laughing matter we say things like hey god why is this happening to me you know will, will i ever get my job back uh, will i ever get my finances back in order will i ever find peace in my home? Will my kids ever respect me? Oh, I was waiting for some of the parents to be like, amen. <laughs> Will my wife ever be able to help me work things out in our relationship? We have all these things that kind of get out of control in our lives. And when we're facing these out-of-control storms of life, you know, we can lose hope if we're not careful. We can give up if we're not attentive to what's going on. And I want to tell you today, I am so glad that you came because I got some good news. Matter of fact, I got some great news for you today because we serve a faithful God. And he sent his son, Jesus, to this world. He is our hope. He is the anchor for our soul. And his hope can help us not only for today, but it is prepared to help us for tomorrow too. We just read Hebrews chapter 6, 19 at the beginning. We have this hope as an anchor for our soul, firm and secure. We are anchored, we are held by hope. You know, hope is mentioned all throughout the Bible. But we've got to know that hope is not just wishful thinking. Hope is not just optimism. Hope is this constant expectation that God is working. I, it's not dependent on your situation. It's not dependent on your circumstances. But our hope is based in the person and the power of Jesus Christ. Listen, God wants you to know today that even when your expectation doesn't line up with your situation, He can still work a revelation in your life if you'll just have some hope. Anybody need some hope today? <laughs> I want to tell you, my hope is in Jesus. 
My hope is in God. It, it's this constant expectation that even when I don't see him at work in my life, even when things seem kind of rough, even when the waves are rocking my boat, I believe that he is at work. It's the anchor for our soul. See, our popularity is not our anchor. Our resume is not our anchor. Our, our zip code is not our anchor. Our bank account or our possessions are not our anchor. No, hope is the anchor for our soul. And we all need some hope. Because of this heavenly hope, I'm attached. I'm held. I am tethered. I brought me a rope today. I'm held firm and secure because of my hope. Because my hope, anchor, that hope is Jesus, and I, I'm attached to someone I can trust. I'm attached to somebody who is reliable, somebody who is faithful, somebody who keeps his promises and, and keeps his word. And so I have this hope. And I'm going to get to it in just a second, but my title for today is Hope Has a Rope. That's what we're going to be talking about in just a moment. You know, I read uh, about the country of Spain, and there was a time where Spain had the motto, and it was these words, Nay plus ultra. Nay plus ultra, which means... Nothing more beyond. They believed that the, the pillar of Hercules and the, the Strait of Gibraltar was the end of the world. There was nothing beyond. There was nothing more to explore. There was nothing more to discover. Uh, they, they had done it all. They had seen it all. So they put it out for the whole world to know Nay plus ultra, there's nothing more beyond. And something happened in 1492 when Columbus sailed the ocean blue. And, and, and he made some discoveries that helped them recognize that, oh, there was something more. There's something more beyond. Uh, the, uh, what, what my experience was thus far wasn't it. That, that wasn't all that there was to it. There was something more to explore. And so they changed their motto to plus ultra. Uh, they acknowledged that there is more beyond can I tell you, no matter what you see right now, no matter what you're experiencing, no matter what storm that you're going through, there is more beyond what you're going through right now. We got to learn to take the nay away, right? The nay plus ultra. We want plus ultra. There is more beyond. God's got more in store for your life. I don't know what it seems like right now. It may seem like, hey, is this all there's ever going to be? No. Can I tell you today? There's plus ultra. There is more beyond. Do you realize that in every anchor you see a cross? You ever notice that? There's a picture right here of the anchor. In that picture, you see that, that, that cross there. And that cross, is, is a, as a symbol, reminds us of the work of Jesus Christ. You know, he went to the cross to, to pay for our sins. But we also know, know that the cross was not the end of the story. There was plus ultra, right? Uh, there, there was more beyond because three days later, Jesus rose from the dead and he is now alive forevermore. He's seated at the right hand of the throne of God and he's making intercession for you and for me today. There's an old hymn that says, when darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, 
my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. See, we have this hope as an anchor to our soul. But can I tell you that it's, it's important to have your anchor set before the storm? Sometimes storms come our way and all of a sudden we're like, oh man, where's the anchor? I need to drop anchor right now. We're getting blown away. We're getting blown off course. We're, we're drifting from where we ought to be. Uh, I, I, need, I need help. I, where's my anchor? We need to set the anchor before. Before the storm comes. Let me read on a little bit from where we've been reading in Hebrews 6. Let's read the second part of verse 19 and on into verse 20. It says, It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner, Jesus, has entered on our behalf. But I want to tell you, we're anchored to the presence of God because our hope is in Jesus. And this verse says that Jesus is the forerunner. He's gone before us uh, and he is with God. And so because of Jesus, we can have access to God's presence because Jesus has guided us and he's led us and shown us the way to go. I'm not a Greek scholar, but I do have some tools at hand on the internet now. And uh, I'm going to tell you the Greek word for that word forerunner is called prodromos. Y'all say that yourself, prodromos. This was also a word that was not just used for being a, a forerunner, somebody that went before someone, but it also in that day described what they would call like a small boat. That when a large ship was coming into the harbor, this small boat, kind of like a tugboat nowadays we would, we would think about, would go out and meet that uh, large ship, especially when there were stormy conditions and the waves were, were moving about. And they would grab the anchor from the large boat and they would go and they would, the large boat would, uh, large ship would let the anchor kind of out. They let the slack out on the rope. And, and, and so that small boat would navigate through the harbor where they knew to go to avoid the rocks, to avoid the pitfalls, and to find a place where they could take and they would set that anchor for that large ship. And then inch by inch, they would uh, just kind of pull in and winch in that large ship into a safe harbor. Can I tell you, this is what Jesus did for us when he rose from the grave and when he ascended to the Father in heaven. He blazed this trail as a forerunner, as a prodromos to heaven for us. Uh, and, and, and he is our hope. He is our anchor. And so he is helping us be tethered to heaven because we're connected to Him. Now every day, we're just trying to winch our way forward, following His path that He led before us, moving us to be closer into the presence of God in heaven. Now we all know we live in a tech-savvy world today, don't we? I mean, we got everything. What's on your phone right now? Man, I, I can't even imagine uh, how much more powerful that was. When I started as a, a pastor, I was a youth pastor in 1991. And I thought I was something because my pastor decided he was going to give me the PC. I, I learned something really quick. Pastor gave me his PC so he could get a new one. <laughs> That's what happened. He's like, pass it down, right? Trickle down. And uh, so the pastor got me his PC, and I thought, man, I'm something. I got a computer to type in my notes for my sermon, and I could make little things. And you know how much power that PC had way back in 1991? How much storage pay space we had on that thing? Are y'all ready? 30 megabytes. <laughs> megabytes. 
I got a thumb drive in my pocket that's got like 50 times more than that, right? Unbelievable. Something back then, but we, you know, we, we weren't as tech savvy as we are now. Now, in your pocket, you own a phone that is a video recording device, a photo editor. It is a, a connection to the World Wide Web. You have an app for everything. But you know what that I've realized? Even in this tech-savvy world that we live in, go to any boating shop. There is no wireless anchor. There is no Bluetooth for an anchor, right? Uh, uh, Hope has a rope. I got a rope right here. Come on. Hope isn't wireless. Hope is tethered to something. We're connected to heaven by the hope that we have in Jesus. John chapter 13 to 17, Jesus gave some of his final words to his disciples before he ascended to the Father. I want to read just a couple of those selected verses. Uh, John 14 verses 26 and 27 says, But the Advocate... The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Man, I need the Holy Spirit because I can't remember anything. I need a reminder, right? Uh, He will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives because the world doesn't give peace, right? Uh, The world gives heartache and hardship. But it says, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. John 16 and verse 7 says this, But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate which he just said was the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Can I tell you, hope has a rope. Our rope is tied to our anchor, that's Jesus. And that rope that ties us to him is the Holy Spirit of God. He's our comforter. He helps us to know that God is with us. He empowers us. Uh, We don't have to feel unequipped or uh, unqualified because the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives within us. He is our, uh, Jesus is our hope and the Holy Spirit is the rope that ties us to him. So we hold on to this rope. There's something that happens. I told Chris he can help me with this today. I'm gonna just, oh, I'm gonna step on it. That's what I'm gonna toss it to you there. Chris is Jesus, the anchor. <laughs> and we got this rope that we're holding on to that is, uh, uh, we're trying to hold us firm and steady, the Holy Spirit. And you know, when I'm holding this firm and tight like this, I'm holding on to this. If, 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 if Jesus wants to give a little tug, if the Holy Spirit, man, I feel it. I feel it. I, I got something on my line here. Well, let's reel this thing in, right? Uh, that's why, you know, when you go fishing, you're like, you got to get it where you can feel the tug. Because if you don't feel the tug, they're going to take the bait away. Well, hey, when you're anchored to Jesus, I want to keep my rope firm and secure. I want to I wanna keep it tight. I want to stay close and tethered to the Lord because if I don't, I can't feel the tug of His Spirit on my life. You see, if you're a believer, you're connected to Jesus through the Holy Spirit. But if you're not careful, you let things come in your life that take priority over Jesus. And all of a sudden, sin starts to creep in. And maybe you still love God, but there's areas you're working on in your life. And the more you're working on them, but you see like you kind of let things go a little bit and all of a sudden there becomes to be this slack in our line so that we don't feel when the tug is pulled when when the tug comes it's like I can't feel it because I, I don't have my rope taunt I don't have it tight I'm not holding it firm and secure and we don't feel the tug we don't feel the prompting of God's spirit in our hearts and we won't Hear him when he's trying to speak to us. So in the next couple of minutes as we 
kind of land the plane, as I say on this uh, message, as we kind of close things out in this last moment uh, that we're together. I, I want to talk about how to get the slack out of your line. I, I don't know about you, but I want to I keep this tight connection and a firm tether to the Holy Spirit in my life. Now, some of y'all may be tempted to like kind of blow me off here because even in the middle of the pandemic, life's not been that bad for you. Maybe things aren't so troubled. You see all these other people going through difficulty, but life's been pretty good. So you're like, hey, I I'm all right right now. But I want to tell you, there's going to come a day, maybe later, that you're going to face a storm. And you may not be facing it right now, but there's going to come a day that you're going to face it, and storm's going to come. So trouble comes to everybody at some point in life. And when it does, if you've if, if you got too much slack in your line, it can be devastating. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 25 says this, When the storm has swept by, the wicked are gone, but the righteous will stand forever. So if you're not going through it right now, Train for the trial that you're not yet in. Because uh, your foundation will be firm and secure if you're holding tight to the Holy Spirit. He's connecting to you to the forerunner, Jesus Christ. So I want to share real quick three ways to keep some slack out of your rope. And here's the first one. Fill your heart with truth. Got to fill your heart with truth. How, how do we keep our connection close to God? How do we keep the slack out of our rope? we got to stay closely connected to God's Word. Psalm 119 verse 11 tells us, I have hidden your Word in my heart that I might not sin against you. See, we got to fill our heart with truth from God's Word. His promises are faithful. His Word is the rock that we stand on and build our lives on. We sang about it today. Everything else will fade away or wash away. So I can't depend on what I'm seeing. I can't stay tied to hope by looking at my circumstances or the things that are going on in the world around me because they're always going to disappoint me. They're always going to lead me astray. They're always going to put slack in my rope. I got to tether myself to the Holy Spirit and I got to allow God's word to fill my heart so that no matter what's happening around me, man, I'm anchored and I'm tethered to Jesus by the Holy Spirit at work in my life. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we live by faith and not by sight. See, belief, our, our faith is the antidote for losing hope and losing heart and giving up. See, we hold on to Scripture and we put it into our hearts. We're leaning in to the peace of God and we're pushing out the darkness in our lives. But we got to dig into God's Word and we got to fill our hearts with His truth. This morning, if you feel like you're going through a stormy time in your life, know that God's going to be with you. Got to hold on tight. And if you're not in a storm right now, hey, the news is there's one coming. And you got to get ready. So, so here, here's what you got to do you got to eat before you're hungry, you got to drink before you're thirsty so you're prepared when the time comes. So, we're sharing some ways that we can kind of keep the slack out of our rope. We've got to fill our hearts with truth. And secondly, we've got to gather with God's people. And I'm not just saying here in person. There's lots watching online right now. You're gathered with God's people. 
And I know that's been a hard thing for many of us over this last six months because we've been separated and, and, and we've been kind of staying at home and, and we've been isolating ourselves. And, and all of those things have been good things that we needed to do. We needed to follow the direction of our leader. But it's hard when we can't be together. I mean, we even came up with a whole campaign here at One Hope where we're like, hey, we said it sucks when we're not together, S-U-C-C-S. So sign up and we'll bring a succulent to your house rooted in love and we'll share some love with you. And, and so we delivered, you know, a bunch of those out to different people. Just drop them at the door, love you six feet away, we'll keep our mask on, all those kinds of things. Because it's hard when we're not together. We say it all the time here, we're better together. And why is that? Proverbs 27, 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. And I believe that with all my heart that, you know, if you want to make it through the week, hey, if you want to crush Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, you better gather with some of God's people on Sunday. You better get into God's Word. You better get into those places where you can connect with people so that you can be strengthened during the week. We got to do it with like a hope group. We got to connect. Those hope groups are coming soon, by the way. Hey, we got to connect with like the Version Bible plan. We got to get together with God's people. And when we do, we're strengthening and we're tightening and securing our grip on the Holy Spirit in our lives, which connects and tethers us tightly to the anchor of our soul, Jesus Christ. Michelle leads the women with one hope. And uh, as they began uh, to uh, start this group, one of the things she used as an illustration, I was going to have a picture, but I think I forgot to put it in. But imagine in your mind right now, a herd of elephants, all right? So they had this whole picture of elephants. And the reason that she brought this out to the ladies is because they said when the elephants travel uh, from one place to another, uh, the women travel together and then the males travel, I guess it's the females, and then the males travel together, all right? So when... Uh, one of the females is hurt or one of them is like uh, in labor or they're having trouble or sick or in distress. What those elephant females do is they surround that one that's in need. And what they begin to do is they begin to kind of circle around and as they do, they kind of stomp their feet. And as they do that, they stomp up the dust so that the predators out there looking in, they can't see the one that's hurt or the one that's wounded or the one that's uh, uh, in trouble right now. They stomp up the dust. And sometimes I want to tell you, it don't just apply to the women, folks. It don't just apply to the women of one hope. It applies to all of us. Sometimes we need to stomp up some dust around one another and encourage and help one another. We need one another. And that's why it's important that we never give up meeting together, whether that's in person or online or in a hope group or wherever. Psalm 92, verse 12 and 13 says, The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. See, there's something that happens when God's people get planted. Scripture says that he inhabits the praises of his people. And the Bible says that when two or more are gathered together in his name, God is in the middle of us. In his presence, we are made whole. I don't know about you, but I want to be able to feel heaven's tug on my life. So it's important that I get myself around God's people. Hey, we're sharing ways to keep the slack out of our rope and feel heaven's tug. We said you can fill your heart with truth. You can gather with God's people. And here's the last one. Man, just hold on. Just hold on. I, I know there are times where it seems like it'd just be easier to let go. But I want to challenge you to hold on. 
Hold on in those moments where it's tough. Hold on where it's difficult. Kind of grab hold and wrap it around your arm and just hold on tight to the Holy Spirit and know that He's going to be at work in you and He's tethered you to the anchor, the hope uh, in Jesus Christ. He's the, the forerunner, the prodromos of your life. He is leading the way to heaven for you. And so we want to hold on. Isaiah 40, verse 30, my last verse today. It says, even youths grow tired and weary, and young men may stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Can I encourage you today, don't get weary in the waiting. Hold on and trust in a God who keeps his promises. You know, as we close today, hope is the anchor for our souls. And we need to know that hope has a rope. Our hope is in the person and in the promise of Jesus, the forerunner. And inch by inch, by the power of his Holy Spirit, he's drawing us closer to him and drawing us towards heaven every day by the power of His Holy Spirit. Hey, will you bow your heads? I want to pray with you this morning before we go. God, we thank you so much for the hope that we can have in you today. We thank you that hope is the anchor for our soul. And in these difficult and even worrisome times that we're living in, I pray, God, that you would help us to stay focused on who you are. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that ties us, that, that tethers us to the promise of heaven. And I pray for those that are here today in person, maybe those that are watching online right now or watching a little later. Lord, I pray that you would help us, especially if, if we're in that place today where we just we haven't felt the tug of the Holy Spirit in our life in quite a while. I pray that you'd help us to pull some slack out of our line today. Lord, keep us tethered tightly to your presence and to who you are. We love you, Lord, today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Let me encourage you in this last moment as we just continue in this time of prayer. Maybe today you're in a place where you feel like the storm is just raging around your life. Somehow, you don't feel like you've got an anchor to hold on to. Or maybe you just feel like your anchor, somehow you let too much slack out of your line and you're not tethered or firm or secure. Maybe you've made a profession of faith, but man, today you realize you need to hold a little firmer to the Holy Spirit in your life. And I want you to miss this this morning. I want you to hear this. God loves you. He's got an amazing plan for your life. He's promised to be with you with His Holy Spirit no matter what comes your way. But we've got to give Him access to our hearts. We've got to give Him access to our lives by inviting Him in Asking Him to forgive us, to make us brand new. So today, I want to pray for you. We're going to pray together in just a moment. And I, hey, I, I believe today can be your day. Your day. You can be sure of your relationship with Jesus. You can be sure of the, 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 the hold that you have that is firm and secure. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, He will rescue you. He will save your soul. You can be sure of your relationship with Him. So I want to pray with you. I want to lead you in a prayer. If you're watching online at home, you can pray this right there. If you're here in the room, just you can pray it right out loud. Nobody's going to be worried that's sitting close by to you. Just pray this with me. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for my sin. Please forgive me. Come live inside of me and make me new. 
I receive your love. I receive your salvation. I give you my life. I make you my Lord, my Savior, my soon coming King. Thank you for the hope that I have in you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate those that are praying that prayer today. And hey, let me encourage you, if you prayed that prayer with me, we're, we're doing a touchless environment right now, so we're not asking you to fill out a card or anything like that. But hey, grab your phone right now. And that same number, we encourage you to text us hello earlier. We want you to text us the word HOPE to 863-777-5639. And as you do, uh, I just want to be able to cheer you on in your faith. Uh, I'm going to send you some messages this week to encourage you and to connect with you, to start a conversation with you. And I want to tell you that you can always email me if you have a prayer need. You can email the word prayer at onehopechurch.org and uh, I'll receive those. They come directly to me. So uh, we're going to close together today. And if this is your first time with us, we'll kind of change our protocol a little bit. I'm going to ask you to stand in just a moment. We're going to get, uh, uh, have a blessing. And then we're going to ask you to sit back down. And Derek's going to come to uh, dismiss us. We're dismissing by rows so that we're not, not all just piled up at the door. And, and we're going to keep our physical distancing as you're on your way out today. Uh, but hey, would you stand with me for the blessing? And we always close our service with a blessing. If you want a little blessing, you can put your hands out like this. But hey, if you want a big blessing, you can just stretch out your arms like this. And we pray that the Lord would bless you and keep you, that his face would shine on you and he would show you his favor this week. Hey, we love you. God bless you. Grace and peace to your house is my prayer for you. Hey, you may be seated.